Splendidio, alhamdulillah. But how do we make up this ummah? We have the means of media today, they are listening to your lectures. What would you say our future is? That's my question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have long studied the subject. Uh, even my dearest friends who are scholars of Islam, and I reckon they recognize them to be more learned than I am. I can't convince them. Yeah, these are people who love me. I love them. I can't convince them. I have come to the conclusion that you cannot succeed in changing the contemporary world of Islamic scholarship. My teacher tried before me and he failed. And I have tried these last 25 years or more and I have failed. And so I've come to the conclusion that we have to bring into being a new generation of scholars of Islam. And uh, the internet has come at just precisely this time the internet to come to help us because around the world they are closing the doors of the masjid on me and uh, when I try to rent a hall then they get to work to try to get the hall cancelled as well yeah they're doing everything because they feel that I pose a threat to them a threat to their house of scholarship it's collapsing uh, but I am happy alhamdulillah I'm happy that I already have students, but not just male, female as well. Uh, there are some of the sisters who are attached to me uh, who are absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, that the, the, the evidence is already there, that we are already moving in the direction that we're making progress. I'm fond of using this Arab proverb al kafila to tasir kafila means the caravan kafila al kafila to tasir the caravan keeps on moving wal kilabutan bah even though the dogs keep on barking so they have not been successful in blocking us Allah has been kind and uh, maybe five years from now I, I may not be still here in the world you see them emerging and there will be glittering glittering scholarship yes they will be able they will, be, they will do be a better job that I am doing in monetary economics I have not uh, by all means exhausted the subject today there are many parts of the subject I have not touched on it today uh, so this is my answer to you. I make dua for that new generation of scholars who are coming. Our Prophet said, Allah's blessing be upon him. He said, my ummah is like the rain. I do not know, or rather it is not known which shower is better, the first or the last. That first shower of rain, the companions of the Prophet, they were shining, shining stars. They, they were luminous. We are like candles, little, little sparks compared to them, to what they were. But he says that in the last shower is such that I don't know which one is better, the first or the last. So take, keep hope in your hearts that we'll have a generation of scholars coming in the future. And this is my lecture in Birmingham, uh, in Edinburgh, which is on, on uh, Juma, inshallah, on the new model of scholarship for Akhiro Zaman. Okay, now, we have a lot of questions. Since this money is haram, what about the status of our zakat? If you can give your zakat in rice and flour, if you can give your zakat in sugar, <laughs> okay, you, you're safer. And if you can give your zakat in dinar and dirham. If you give your zakat in paper money and the paper is haram, you're not, you're not sure. 
They are not sure. What should the individual do in responding to inflation? We talked about the state and the community. But he, she, this person is asking about the individual. Number one, you should keep some of your wealth in dinar and dirham. Store it in dinar and dirham. Okay? If you don't know how to buy gold and silver, just go to the jeweler, the jewelry shop, and they'll help you. Number two, the prophet said if you have land, hold on to your land. If you have animals, hold on to your animals. This is not the country to invest your money. Not this country. Because if you study Islamic eschatology, Britain is doomed. Britain will not survive. Okay? Go out there, which we they look at as, as hell, <laughs> and there buy land. Buy land. Because land will keep its value. Buy animals because animals will keep its value. Store some food in your house, which is non-perishable food. Hmm? I have a student in France, and I went to his home, and I said to myself, my gosh, he's done better than the teacher. <laughs> he has everything stored in his house, non-perishable food. In your opinion, Where in the world today is the best conception of money? But wait a minute. Didn't Zimbabwe do it recently? Didn't Zimbabwe declare gold and silver to be legal tender? That's right. We've been telling Zimbabwe to do this for a long, long, long time now. Are we disappointed it took so long? But just what I've been asking our people to do, Zimbabwe did it. You could go to Zimbabwe today and you could get, buy gold and silver and you could use it as money. I went to Iran and I found only two ayatollahs. Only two who agreed with me. The money is bogus and haram. I also found ayatollahs who reminded me of the Shah. <laughs> they, looked, they looked and they behaved like emperors. And they had no knowledge at all of the subject. And they are ayatollahs. <coughs> But I found the Iranian people had a quick understanding of the subject, like the Pakistani people. But they said to me, Sheikh, you have to go to the Rahbar, meaning the Ayatollah Khamenei, Sayyid Ali Khamenei. He's called the Supreme Leader, the Rahbar. You have to go to him. And if you can convince him then tomorrow this country will change. He will declare the money to be haram. I said to them, I will do no such thing. <laughs> I will do no such thing. Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change the condition of a people. 40 years after you had your Islamic revolution and your money is still bogus in, in Iran and you say you're an Islamic revolution. Allah will not change your condition. No, until you take the initiative using the guidance that he sent in the Quran to change your own condition. So Iran has to change their own condition. I'm not going there to do that. And uh, similar with um, Pakistan. 
I spoke to Kazi Hussein Ahmad. No, 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 I can't say it's haram. Only Mufti can do that. So wait until, <laughs> wait until your Mufti, Mufti Azam or whatever they call, wait until they give the declaration that the paper is haram. The individual can, come, can seek to escape from this fraudulent system by not keeping your wealth in paper money and not keeping it in the bank. Hmm? Take your money that you have and invest it in that which has intrinsic value. I've already answered that for you. Uh, I don't have the time to deal with the, the Bilal and uh, the dates, Hadith, which uh, an interesting subject will take too much time. If we, if we leave the IMF, should we also leave the United Nations? Only one Muslim leader did the right thing. He took his country out of the UN and he took his country out of the IMF and then the CIA came after him and they removed him. Who was that? Huh? You don't know? I'm only hearing whispers, why don't you speak? You're only whispering, you, you're not too sure. It was Ahmad Sokarno. He took Indonesia out of the UN. And he did the right thing. And he think, took Indonesia out of the IMF and he did the right thing. Why was it the right thing? Have you ever studied the Charter of the United Nations? Have you ever done it? I was a student of international relations. I had to study the Charter of the UN. There's a conflict between the Charter of the United Nations and the Quran. That's right, there's a conflict. You go and study it yourself and you see. Supreme authority lies with Allah, not with the Security Council. Supreme authority lies with Allah, not the Security Council. But if the Security Council tells you, stop fighting, you got to stop. Allah says, no, keep on fighting. But the Security Council says, stop. You have to stop. Because supreme authority now with the Security Council. Yes, if we leave the United Nations and we leave the IMF, we wouldn't have that world stage but we'll be much more dangerous to them than if we are in. And they should be celebrating that we have left, but they won't be able to digest their biryani if we leave. <coughs> They'll be worried. They'll be scared if we ever leave the United Nations or the IMF. They'll do everything they can possibly do to prevent us from leaving. How do we live in a world full of interest? Don't borrow money on interest. Kabine, don't borrow money on interest to buy a house. Don't borrow money on interest to buy a car. I lived in the United States for 12 years. I went to five different universities. I'm a former foreign service officer of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of our country. And at the end of 12 years, the car I was driving was worth about $500. And a truck came a few days before my departure and hit the car. And the truck went off. And the cost of repair will be more than the value of the car, so I had to junk the car. <laughs> yes. 
That's my example. I never bought a house on, on interest in the United States. I never bought a car on United, in, in interest. Yeah? Stop borrowing money on interest. Stop it. You borrow money on interest, you're putting a rope around your neck. Since we are using bogus money, haram money, and Allah made halal dinar in the Islam, are this Islamic world making indirect shirk? Of course, we are living today in universal shirk. But our Prophet warned, he said it would be so difficult to recognize that shirk. Shirk means blasphemy, heresy and so on as it would be to recognize a black ant on a black stone on a dark night. The only way you can see that ant on that stone on that night is if you have a torchlight. But for shirk, it's not a torchlight you need. It's noor in the heart. Noor in the heart. Will the IMF ask Pakistan to give up nuclear weapons for future loans? They don't. The, IMF, the IMF is not so stupid. <laughs> no, they wouldn't ask Pakistan to do that. Because Pakistan will never do that. No. I'm getting old. Is it too late to start buying gold and silver? No, it's not. No, it's not. Would you regard the dollar when it was backed by gold until 1971 to be legal money? All right, you ask a question, it will take some time to answer, and we have little time left. What happened at Bretton Woods? And the IMF came out of Bretton Woods. Was that they decided to dump the sterling pound as a universal currency and replace it with the US dollar. And so Pax Britannica had to step aside to be replaced by Pax Americana. <coughs> the US dollar became the dollar, the money of uni, at the universal currency. Because number one, only the US dollar and no other currency was redeemable in gold. And they fixed the rate at $35 US for one ounce of gold. But you and I using the US dollar, but we could not go to Uncle Sam with $35 and ask for an ounce of gold. We couldn't do that. Only a central bank could do it. So this is not halal. <laughs> In order for it to be halal, if the US dollar was redeemable in gold for everybody, anybody could go and take $35 US and get, uh, get an ounce of gold, then yes, it would have been halal. But it was not halal because they denied, they denied this to people. <laughs> And also, the government that dared to go to Uncle Sam to ask for the gold had to be a stupid government. Yes, because there are consequences. And it took one leader who had the courage that no, no leader in the world of Islam had, only one. What was his name? De Charles de Gaulle. 
that he stood up in the French National Assembly and declared that this monetary system was unjust, favoring the United States. And then he, France now decided, we want to redeem US dollars for gold. And that led Richard Nixon in 1971 to say, we gave our word, but we're not going to keep our word. We gave our word, but we're not going to keep our word. See? And then this fig leaf that the US dollar had of being redeemable into gold was gone. And from Bretton Woods came every other currency in the world would have its value based not on gold but on its, re its re conversion to the US dollar. What is the process of leaving the IMF? How easy it is? What are the consequences of leaving? I have not studied. I am not studying and they probably manufacturing more and more rope every day to make it impossible for you to leave the IMF. You have to be, you have to be someone who is studying this as a PhD student, okay? To find out over the years what and what they have done to try to make it impossible to leave the IMF. That's not true. There's only one monetary system now controlling the whole world. But that monetary system controlling the whole world is now under attack. And the attack is being led by China. It's called BRICS. BRICS. And in, in that attack with China, there is Russia. <coughs> and there's India. And there's South Africa, and there's Brazil, these five. But a number of other countries are now joining BRICS to offer to the world an alternative monetary system to the one that's now prevailing. How can we introduce a new currency? that will be halal. You can, you can have a system like checks that I can write out a check provided that you can cash it. Okay? In, in, as an alternative to actually having the physical goal. You can do that. And this system operated for uh, thousands of years. That's how international trade was taking place. People were shipping from India, shipping to Europe, and they didn't have to <laughs> transport the gold and silver. <laughs> no. Because you had a system of, um, of, of uh, uh, money, monetary changes that are um, based on trust. Okay, that uh, the, the, the payment will be made over there, the ship, the woods are shipped from here, and then afterwards you can settle with the gold. Um, so yes, this is possible, but there must be a law and someone to enforce the law, that if I write out a check for one million dinars and I take the goods, and when you try to cash the check, you can't get the one million dinars. Then I should be punished with deterrent punishment. There are three kinds of punishment. There's one punishment which is retributive. You did this to me, I do it to you. There's one kind of treatment of punishment which is reformatory. 
we are punishing you to try to correct you. But there is one form of punishment which is deterrent punishment. If you steal, we cut off your hand. That's not retributive. That's not reformatory. That is deterrent punishment. So with this system, if you have a check, check system, you have to have <laughs> deterrent punishment. Who will enforce that deterrent punishment? When the fellas writing the checks are the same fellas who have to enforce the law. Yeah? They, will not, they will not do that. Okay? That's the problem with the system. Yeah. Um, I should be back in London, inshallah, uh, before, a day or two before Chandra, the night when we look for the moon. Okay? And I'm going to be staying right here in Ilford. And uh, my students and I are going to go look look for the moon. Today people don't even know where to look for the moon. You have to look for the moon where the sun is setting, not where the sun is rising. <laughs> All right? And uh, it's not one person who has to go, several people have to go in different locations, <coughs> different locations, all over Britain. Okay? So I'll come to be able to be part of that searching for the moon and I will stay for the first week of Ramadan here in London. Can land be used as money? No, you can't transfer <laughs> land. I want to buy, I want to buy a kilo of mangoes. How would I transfer land for a kilo of mangoes? A microtransactions, no. That's why in the Sunnah, it has to be Articles of food consumption, which have a shelf life, and which are in abundant supply in the market. In, in, uh, in Cuba, you'd use sugar as money, because Cuba is a massive export, uh, producer of sugar. Uh, in Indonesia, you'd use rice as money. Not the rice with the, with the paddy off, no, the paddy with the scale on, eh? that one. Uh, in Pakistan, Pakistan has an abundance of wheat, abundance of wheat, abundance of rice. So Pakistan has no shortage of money. Is it time now for Salat? Five minutes, okay. Can cryptocurrency be based on value? Can cryptocurrency currency be legal tender? Uh, I don't know. How much weight? <laughs> How much weight? If I put cryptocurrency on a scale, how much weight will it have? Can anyone help me? <coughs> have you ever weighed it? Why is my audience so quiet? Why is my audience so quiet? Have you ever put cryptocurrency on a scale to weigh it? Can I bury cryptocurrency in the ground? Huh? <laughs> Does cryptocurrency have intrinsic value? But then, <laughs> why ask this question? This question is about insurance and uh, I avoid insurance myself, except where the law required like uh, drive motor car insurance. But when I take a motor car insurance, I take the minimum. The minimum. Uh, and I would prefer to see that we establish our own insurance company, but the insurance company should not be a commercial enterprise. No. 
our, com our insurance company will be a non-profit enterprise. It's not been operating for profit. So that when people have accidents in their cars and so on, we have a means whereby the problem can be resolved. Okay? Um, but someone better, more learned than I am, will have to give a fatwa on insurance. Would declaring dinar and dirham as legal tender result in war? But Israel has already done it. <laughs> dinar and dirham are legal tender already in several states of the United States. <coughs> dinar and dirham, meaning gold and silver, is legal tender in Zimbabwe. Huh? So wake up. <laughs> the dollar is collapsing. And a new monetary system is moving to cryptocurrency, blockchain. Can you elaborate? Yes. The reason why they have brought cryptocurrency, which is not under the control of the central banks, is because they want cryptocurrency to perform the destabilizing function that would facilitate the transition from the present monetary system to one universal currency for all of mankind, which would be under the control of the State of Israel. Okay? Okay, time for start. Well, we have to now postpone these questions. And uh, I thank you for being such a patient audience. Okay, thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah fahab li tawbah